The holiday horror stories of travelers around the nation are finally beginning to dwindle today. Southwest Airlines has finally returned to a more regular flying schedule after what they say was a winter storm related meltdown last week. Today, the Dallas based carrier did have to cancel 160 more flights and more than 400 were delayed. Most of those in or out of Denver. But that's a far cry from the thousands that were canceled every day last week. Those travel nightmares affecting tens of thousands of people, including one family from Powell, Wyoming. In fact, it got so bad for them that they ditched the plane and drove all the way home from San Diego. That plan even came with some risk, though. David Jay shares their story. A Powell family returned home after spending Christmas in San Diego. The trip involved a couple of stops in Billings on each leg and also was delayed by flight cancellations from Southwest Airlines. So the family, instead of risking another flight cancellation, decided to rent a car and make the 23-hour drive back home to Powell. It's Heart Mountain. Six-year-old Mikey Holland spent his 23 hours creating artwork of Heart Mountain. Trying to manage 23 hours in a span of two days is... Pretty crazy, but they were troopers. David Holland says he and his wife made the decision to drive rather than take a chance on the Southwest Airlines flight out of San Diego. We lucked out. Um, there were two cars left from budget. They were the ones that we went through that we got a pretty good deal on. And they drove home on a slightly longer route because they needed to pick up their car in Bozeman, where they left on a Southwest Airlines flight on Christmas Eve. That night, they flew from Bozeman to Las Vegas, where they were told about every 15 minutes that their connecting flight to San Diego would be delayed. The flight did not take off till one o'clock in the morning. So we waited an additional two hours on the flight to get to takeoff. And then we arrived in um, San Diego at 2.15 in the morning. They finally made it to San Diego early Christmas morning. The Hollands, along with other family from Albuquerque, spent Christmas with their daughter, third-class petty officer Zyra Marez, part of the crew aboard the USS Tripoli. We got to have Christmas lunch with her and all the crew members on the ship. The whole family had not been together for Christmas in seven or eight years. The family from Albuquerque also changed plans because of Southwest Airlines cancellations. Super thankful that we all had that opportunity, and um, I know it meant a lot to all of us. David Holland says he understands the Southwest explanations of computer problems, weather, and not enough employees. And as a teacher in Powell, he says his two youngest children picked up some good lessons along the road. Learning how to be patient and use their creative minds. In Billings, David J. MTN News. It was a devastating morning for one Billings family after a fire destroyed their West End home. The three people inside luckily made it out alive, but seven cats and a dog were unable to escape in time. And for the son whose mother lived in that house, it was a nightmare come true. Our Haley Monaco spoke with him and has the story. Early Monday morning, this home here was engulfed in flames, leaving it uninhabitable. All occupants inside made it out safe. However, there were many pets that died inside the home. I'm just watching on um, TV and I hear sirens. Ed Guerrero always pays attention when he hears sirens and emergency vehicles speeding past his home on Boulder Avenue. I always think that something has happened to my mom. His mother, Soledad Guerrero, suffers from dementia and lives just down the street. And Monday morning, his nightmare came true. I look out the window and I see smoke coming up uh, over here. So I thought, you know, I thought, I thought it was this house on fire, but it was my mom's. Ed says his mother escaped thanks to help from his sister and another person, but his childhood home was destroyed. Ed and his eight siblings grew up here. The incredible damage it did to my mom's house. It's horrible. And while everyone made it out, the fire did claim eight lives near and dear to the family. I guess seven cats and her dog got killed. It's still not clear how the fire started, but it's taken a huge toll on the woman who lived here for over 50 years. And this family is now left trying to make some crucial decisions for their mom. A woman now navigating not only the challenges of dementia, but what comes next after losing her home in a fire. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. New details are emerging tonight after police finally arrested a suspect in the murders of four University of Idaho students. 28-year-old Brian Koberger was taken into custody Friday in Pennsylvania. Law enforcement sources say FBI agents tracked Koberger's movements for days leading up to his arrest at his parents' home. In their first statement, the family of Koberger said 
They care deeply for the four families who've lost children. They also said they are fully cooperating with police in an attempt to seek the truth and promote his presumption of innocence. He's accused of stabbing the four students while they were sleeping on November 13th. Koberger is a Ph.D. criminology student at Washington State University, lived about 15 minutes from the victims. Police have not said if he knew those students, but sources say forensic analysis allegedly link him to those murders. Koberger is expected to waive extradition tomorrow and return to Idaho to face the charges. Very scary moments in tonight's Monday night football game between the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals. Bills safety DeMar Hamlin collapsed midway through the first quarter after making a tackle. He stood up briefly before falling to the ground. He received immediate medical attention and medical personnel along with paramedics administered CPR on the field for several minutes before rushing Hamlin to the hospital. Hamlin is listed in critical condition. That game has been postponed. We're learning new information tonight about a snowmobiler who was killed in an avalanche Saturday near Cook City. According to the Gallatin National Forest, the victim is a 21-year-old man from Washington State. He was snowmobiling with his 17-year-old brother when he got caught in this slide here that carried him about 600 feet. Our Charlie Klepp spoke with two men who were close by when it happened. We're now learning that the man was buried under five feet of snow and it took rescue efforts about an hour to actually find him. Part of that delay is because he didn't have one of these, an avalanche beacon, which would have helped the rescuers locate his body underneath the snow. When Alden Shawcross and Sam Hensler arrived in Cook City Saturday morning to do some backcountry skiing, they didn't expect to have a front row seat to a tragedy. We finished up our ski day and got back to town. Everyone, everyone was talking about it and then you know, cut us on the aftermath. Shawcross and Hensler were a part of a group of eight skiing the same area where the avalanche struck. As you can see from the tracks in these photos, it's a popular area for snowmobilers and skiers. It was surprising to me in some ways at how the town just kind of moved forward. They continued to ski in the days that followed, but say the avalanche was never far from their minds. Whenever we go out, we're assessing the conditions, the aspects, the snow conditions, and uh, and what risks uh, we need to watch out for. The name of the victim has yet to be released, but we do know he's from Washington State and was snowmobiling with his 17-year-old brother on this slope when the snow broke. He was about a, cu a couple hundred feet from the top when the avalanche broke, and he was swept all the way to the, almost the toe of the debris here, where he was buried five feet deep. The video released by the Gallatin National Forest explains the unstable, windswept conditions that led to the death. He broke one and a half to two feet deep on average. The men were also snowmobiling without avalanche beacons, which would have helped nearby witnesses more quickly find where the man was buried. A nearby group of riders saw, rode upon the debris and saw his sled sticking out. They started a beacon search. Didn't have a signal. For riders or skiers like Hensler and Shawcross, it's a nightmare that will serve as a reminder to be extra cautious. If, if anything, it just hammers in the point that even though the, the conditions were pretty good, I mean, about as safe as they can get, like the risks always exist. I mean, air on the side of caution, you know, it's the, the risks are, are there and they're serious. Near Cook City, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. We're going to take a look at Doppler radar here this evening. Riverton, there's a radar site for the National Weather Service and also Rapid City. So it looks like there's a little more snow still falling here, but there is at least some light snow. Some of the accumulations through Wyoming were pretty impressive. Check out 13 inches in Casper. You can see KC Buffalo also picking up several inches of snow. Batitsi, three and a half inches of snow there. It just kind of stalled out once it got to the Montana Wyoming line. But along with the snow that's already fallen, now we have some areas where we're starting to see some fog start to develop. Some of the area is actually a little better than it was a short time ago, but we'll watch some of this fog continue to move into southeastern Montana through the overnight. More on that and the rest of the forecast details coming up. The 68th session of the Montana Legislature kicked off in Helena today with the first of 90 scheduled working days. And the whole
The House and Senate officially gaveled at noon, but today was a day of greetings and ceremonies. Both chambers conducted full roll call votes of all their members, and then all representatives and senators took the oath of office. Hundreds of bills have already been introduced, and today both sides detailed the work ahead. To the members of the Republican caucus, we must remain steadfast in working together to achieve the conservative mandate that our voters and Montanans have sent us here to accomplish. I have confidence in each of you here today that together we can accomplish great things. Senate Democrats are ready to create the majorities we need to meet the pressing needs of our state. We're committed to work with respect for all of you and Montana citizens. You can also expect our conscientious commitment to the rights and freedoms guaranteed by our Montana Constitution. As the 68th session of the Montana Legislature begins in Helena, MTN News is your source for complete coverage on air and online at KTVQ.com. And if you download the Q2 streaming app for Roku and other devices, you can watch all our stories on demand. You can also catch our weekly roundup, Face the State. New episodes premiere each Friday night at 8 o'clock and air throughout the weekend. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, Montana's minimum wage is once again on the way up, but what impact will it have for Montanans? We'll break it down next. And later, a new Congress is about to convene in Washington. We'll dive into the work to be done coming up in just a bit. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. There's better news for some Montana workers heading into 2023 as the state's minimum wage is going up. But tonight, with very few businesses still actually paying minimum wage, Alina Howder takes a closer look at who it will benefit. 27 states, including Montana, raised their minimum wage this Monday, but most businesses, including Mitchell Golf here in Billings, have always paid their employees more than minimum wage, which makes us wonder what kind of impact this will actually have. If anyone knows anything about staff retention, it's Bill Mitchell, owner of Mitchell Golf. The people I have mostly have been working here a long time, uh, some people up to 25 plus years. Mitchell says there's no secret formula to keeping employees, but believes it starts with paying more than minimum wage, which was just raised 75 cents to 9.95 an hour. And it appears Bill Mitchell isn't the only one who has that figured out. According to the Montana Department of Labor, only 4.2% of Montana's workforce was making the minimum wage in 2022. I believe 15 really should be the minimum wage. We found that people who make less than that, you almost need a second job uh, to survive, and especially with the inflation right now. Mark Hardin is the business developer for the staffing agency Express Employment Professionals in Billings. So a couple of the things you said you were looking for? None of the companies they work with offer minimum wage. We have a couple in the 14 range, but for the majority, our uh, our clients are 16 to 17. And that even includes fast food restaurants. Most are now offering higher wages to try and combat the nationwide worker shortage. Hardin knows firsthand that it works. He says companies offering lower wages have a harder time finding employees. If the wages came up, I think a lot of places would be a little bit more successful in finding the right applicants. That's something Bill Mitchell figured out long ago, but an approach especially true now as inflation takes its toll in both businesses and customers alike. It's been interesting because inflation, a lot of our lower price entry items have gone up significantly in price. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. As you just heard, Montana is one of 27 states that will see a minimum wage increase this year. Of those states, Washington has the highest minimum wage at $15.74 an hour, while Montana has the lowest. Currently, the federal minimum wage for employees is $7.25 an hour. And joining us again, got another pretty picture to show off. That's for sure. Uh, here's a look. Greg shared this one from around Hart Mountain, the Powell area. And the nice part about it right now is it's warm enough we can stand out there and actually <laughs> enjoy the sunset. So I go, okay, that's good. I'm inside. We'll come back and take a look and see if this weather will hold. The forecast is next. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Stock the bank weather cam. Let's jump right into the almanac for today. Well, it's really close to average for this time of the year. One degree warmer, one degree cooler, depending on whether you're in the morning or the afternoon. And with no new precipitation, we still have a clean slate for the brand new year. These were 
Temperatures across the region for highs today, only 13 in Haver, 12 in Glasgow and Wolf Point, 20 in Williston today, but 29 for you in Miles City, 34 in Sheridan, and 31 in Cody and Livingston for the afternoon with that 36 here in Billings. It was typical for what we were seeing across the state. Overall, a fairly quiet weather pattern. As we showed you at the top of the newscast, it was really into Wyoming where we saw the snow. Now, as we start to shift gears, Fog is going to be the bigger threat, as we started to show you at the beginning of the news. Uh, areas most impacted will be from Billings to the east and some areas to the south as well. Up into northeastern Montana, you'll also see some heavy fog at times where visibility could be down to a quarter or half mile. And we could see some slick roadways to start to develop along with that as well. So for tomorrow morning, plan on maybe a little extra time. Not everybody's going to see those impacts, but it's certainly a real possibility first thing of the day. Here's where the snow is now. A lot of that moving off into South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas are going to see the most of the impacts now as that low swirls around. This is a huge system, though. It'll create some shower, thunderstorm, even uh, likely some hail, gusty winds, tornadoes could develop on this, especially on the warm side of this. Well, we're looking at some heavy snow developing into areas into the Great Lakes state. So we're left in between a couple of weather systems in the short term, leaving us other than the fog fairly quiet, at least through Tuesday. We'll take the temperatures ahead. And as we saw today, many of the temperatures will be close to the seasonal averages for the afternoon tomorrow. And then as we take it through time and this storm system exits off towards the east, we'll start to see the wind develop as our next weather system moves in from the west. Livingston, Nye areas, 50 plus mile per hour wind gusts are certainly possible Tuesday night into Wednesday and then Great Falls North, Cutbank, Shoto area. We'll see some of those stronger winds develop. Great Falls will be breezy as well.